Hello, welcome. It's Liz from My Star Tarot, and I'm going to uh, be doing my March favorites and a catch up. And um, a lot has been going on with me over the past month or so. So um, I have a feeling this is going to be kind of a wandering, um, blabbering kind of a um, video. Um, so I'm trying to, I actually made notes uh, because I have a lot of little this and that's to talk about. Um, so I thought maybe I'd start with decks. So, um, uh, I was away for a month, the month of March. I, I left, um, February 27th and I got back March 27th. Um, I went to, uh, Belize. Um, actually I was on a, um, a little island. When I say little, I mean little. It's five miles long. Key Cocker. And um, there's no cars. They only have golf carts or you walk or bicycle. And um, so anyway, I was there for a month and um, I knew, you know, I had to think things through. I'm like, oh, shoot. I cannot do what I've done in the past and weigh my suitcase down where did I go? Oh, I went to um, Barbados like six or seven years ago and I was going for two weeks and I had 14 decks. <laughs> Oops. And my suitcase was almost overweight. I think it was. I think I had to take a couple things out at the airport, put them on my carry on. Um, that's not good. So I, I here's here's how I, my experience. Maybe you've had the same or not. But it doesn't matter, no matter what decks I bring with me, if it's two, if it's 14, however many it is, I always want a deck that I haven't brought with me. Always. It always happens. So this time I'm like, well, I'm going to be gone a month. What am I going to bring? And I really, really tried hard to, to limit myself. And I'm not going to show the decks. These are decks that are well known and decks that I've shown on my channel before. I'm just going to say what they were. So I brought um, Fifth Spirit by Charlie Claire Burgess, which is a favorite of mine and has been now. I think I've had it a little over a year. Um, and then um, I brought a the Wiser um, uh, Rider Waite Smith deck because I wanted to have just a kind of straightforward um, right away Smith. And the pocket size um, Next World. And um, Earth, Moon, and Shadow Oracle. And uh, Rooted Woman Oracle. Um, Rooted Woman um, is was, um, I had just gotten um, in February, I believe. Um, so anyway, those were the decks I brought. Oh, and I brought um, uh, Jean Noble, and I brought the uh, a, a TDM text kind of book with me because my plan was to study uh, Tower de Masse using the Jean Noble. Guess what? I did not even open the deck the whole time. I, well, I think I did look at it. Didn't read the book, didn't do any readings with T, the Terra de Monster, Jean Noble. That just fell by the wayside. But you know what? I was away. I was on vacation. Um, I was kind of hanging out and just doing whatever seemed to fit the moment. And I really didn't... Um, spend as much time with tarot as I had anticipated. Um, I pulled from the Oracle decks um, fairly frequently. And my daughter, um, who's um, teaching an online tarot class, um, 
developed a uh, spring equinox spread for her students and she shared that with me, which I did use and it was really powerful. And then my birthday is two days after the equinox. So I did a little birthday spread, but um, really I did more Oracle than tarot. Um, and I really didn't do even as much Oracle as I had expected to do, but you know what? I did what I did and it's all fine. That's, it just was different than what I had expected. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit. I just mentioned that my birthday was a couple days after the spring equinox. So my sister was um, down with me. Um, so I had kind of a little rotating group of folks. Um, I went down with a, uh, an old friend of mine who I've known since nursery school. And we grew up together and went to grade school and junior high and high school together. And then we were flatmates um, after college. So this is someone who's been a big part of my life for my whole life. Um, her name is Betsy. So Betsy came down with me for the first uh, eight days and then she left. And then I had a week by myself, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. I've never really, other than work travel, which I used to travel on my own all the time for work, but you know, it's work. Um, I had never really taken a holiday by myself um, before and that it was wonderful. Um, I really enjoyed that. And then my um, sisters came down and one stayed for a week and um, she left. And then my other sister stayed for the uh, past, the, the last two weeks. So we were sitting out on the porch in front of the house where we were staying on the morning of my birthday and discussing what we were gonna do for the day. And all of a sudden my sister said, oh, look, look. And I looked up and there overhead kind of circling was a flamingo. And I had never seen a flamingo in the wild. You know, I'd seen them in like, Everglades Park or you know whatever but I'd never seen one flying overhead before and um, it's not a car I'd never seen one or heard of anybody seeing one in Key Cocker so it was kind of like oh okay and it flew around and around and then I just was like in awe and amazed and then it just left and I asked some people that live there, you know, do you see flamingos around here? And they're like, no. And I said, well, I saw one this morning, um, you know, flying overhead. So they were kind of surprised. But anyway, when I got home, I decided to pull a flamingo card um, out of an animal deck. And, um, um, oh gosh, I forget the name of this animal deck. I'll, I'll type it in the um, description box but um, this is um, flamingo and it's a uh, unity heart and it says you are being called to work on collective healing and um, I am <laughs> um, about uh, a couple months ago um, well before the pandemic and for many years before that I was part of a coven and part of a woman's circle. And then I was, um, you know, giving women's circles just in general to folks um, out of a friend's yoga studio. And then, you know, um, the pandemic came and that fell by the wayside. And um, just a couple of months ago, it, it just kind of hit me really strongly. I need to go back to offering those circles because you know, we really need them. Um, we need the collective healing. We need the collective empowerment. You know, globally, it's pretty bad for women, um, specifically here in the States. Um, so just to give you an idea, if you're not from the States, one of the states, uh, Arizona, just this past week, um, passed or reinstituted a uh, reproductive health law that originated in, I can't remember if it was 1865 or 1885, but nonetheless, they just put back into law, a law that originated in 1885. Are you kidding me? 
So that's what's going on here in this country. So I need to do women's circles for our collective healing and for our collective empowerment, for us to raise our voices, to connect with nature, to connect with the divine feminine, the goddess, etc., and to connect with each other. So um, I feel like this is an affirmation of something that I was feeling. And before I left, I reached out to my um, friend whose uh, studio I used for the circles. And I said, hey, you know, I was thinking maybe we could re-institute um, the women's circles. What do you think? And she said, people are desperate for it. So now I'm back and I'm going to meet up with her on Saturday and we're going to start uh, working on that. So I'm pretty excited about that and the fact that I saw a flamingo and that the meaning is working on collect. I'm being called to work on collective healing because I, I know that's true. So I'm not sure that I meant to say all that, but I did. So, all right. Um, and that brings me kind of to um, a topic that I've been seeing, you know, kind of uh, two schools of thought on um, Tarot Tube and on um, Instagram. Um, people that have kind of um, tarot um, channels and more spiritually... Um, focused channels, um, astrology, you know, women's circles, tarot, um, crystals, all these kinds of things. Um, so there's sort of one school of thought that says, well, this is a spiritual channel. And so I do not bring um, politics into this at all. It's, uh, it's a spiritual um, channel. And then there's the other school, which I belong to that says you know what I'm a witch um, yeah I talk about spiritual things and spirituality and rituals and tarot and um, spellcraft and all these things but I, how is it that as a witch and, and I'm speaking for myself I, I can't say what other people should do so please don't hear me saying that because that isn't what I'm saying. I'm saying for me and for my channel and for my Instagram, social activism is a huge part of my spirituality. It's a huge part of being a witch for me. Um, doing spell work to right wrongs, speaking out to right wrongs, um, pointing out things that need to be fixed, um, you know, misogyny, racism, xenophobia, transphobia, homophobia, um, all kinds of hateful things. Um, I feel like it is my duty and my calling to make that part of my channel. And I see a really strong connection between my social activism work and my spirituality. They're very much um, interconnected and interwoven. Um, so again, that's me. That's, I, I'm not saying everyone should do what I do. I, I need to do what I need to do. And, you know, um, some people are cool with it and some people aren't. And I feel like I have sort of my core group of folks who watch my videos and I know that they're into that whole intertwined, interwoven um, situation as well. Um, so anyway, um, that's something that um, I, I did a post on, a couple of, several posts on Instagram about and I, I've spoken out um, on my YouTube channel about it numerous times too. And a lot of the decks that I have, tarot decks and oracle decks that I have, have social activism as part of them. For example, Fifth Spirit and Next World, two of the decks that I brought to Key Cocker with me. Um, and in fact, um, the um, uh, woman who um, 
who sort of was the caretaker of the um, house that we're that we stayed at. Um, she has like a little tiny house in front. And um, so while we were there, she told me um, I had um, these earrings on, as a matter of fact. And she said, oh, I like your earrings. What are they? And I said, oh, they're, um, they're a tarot card. They're the star card. And she was like, oh, oh, I have a tarot deck. I should have known, you know. So she was saying, oh, I, I just have one deck and I really don't know that much about tarot. But anyway, so okay. So then um, a week or two later, she was um, talking to me about the fact that she has a TikTok channel. She said, you should have one. And I said, well, I have a YouTube and that's good for me. And she said, well, you know, um, if you just keep posting videos on TikTok, eventually one of them's going to go viral. And the next thing you know, you're going to have a million followers. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> but she told me that she has 1,300,000 followers or whatever they're called on TikTok. And I was like, what? I said, well, what are you, like, what's your channel about? And she said, um, lip reading. And I was like, oh, okay, lip reading. I guess it's a thing that they, people watch videos of celebrities and then they lip read what this, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If you know, comment below and explain it to me because, you know, I'm not young, <laughs> so I'm not up on all these things. Um, but anyway, um, so my sister and I said, oh, we, let's, you know, we got to look her up on TikTok. And, you know, we watched a, a couple of the, like maybe four or five of the videos and we were like, huh? <laughs> I just didn't get it at all. They were like, you know, 60 second videos or maybe a couple minute videos. I'm like, why does she have over a million followers for these? I don't get it. I don't get it. So then we were watching a little more. And the next thing I knew, she started, uh, she had a video where she was um, talking about Palestine. And she said, um, so I thought, oh, I wonder how this is going to go. So she really passionately was speaking she's a young woman 26 um she was um passionately speaking out about what the the horrific situation in um in palestine and one of the reasons that i'm even bringing this up there there's actually a couple reasons but the first reason is that it ties in with my whole you know intertwining social activism with other things that we do and she said, you know, it's our duty. We we really we have to speak out. We have to act out. This is wrong. What's happening there? And you know, she just went on and on about that. So I was like, all right, love that. Great. So when we were getting ready to go, um, the day that I was getting ready to go, um, leave and, and come home, I well, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna give her my next world um tarot because it's, you know, it's tarot and social activism in one deck. Um, Christy C. Rhodes, um, she's a social activist and that's very clear in those cards. So I went, uh, this woman's name is Nina. I said, Nina, I have something for you. I, I don't even know if you're gonna want it or not, but I have this tarot deck for you. And she's like, oh my gosh, oh, thank you so much. So I said, you know, it's, I said, I, when I saw your video about Palestine, I thought right away, I have to give you this deck because I said, I, it's a tarot deck, but it also is, um, has social activism. It's a, a melding of those two things. And I was showing her a couple of the, I was showing her the major cards. And like, for example, I believe the tower card is called revolution, you know, so, um, she was thrilled. And she said, oh, I, I said, you know, you can use these on your TikTok. And she said, no, I, I don't really know enough about tarot. I said, it's okay. I said, pull a card and look it up in the guidebook and just read the guidebook. And then 
tell your reactions to the card. You know, it only has to be a two or three minute video. So I haven't checked her channel or whatever you call TikTok, uh, since uh, I got home. So I don't know if she's doing that or not. But anyway, that was an interesting occurrence. And I loved that my um, beloved um, Next World Tarot is in new hands um and it was the pocket one i had edged it really special and i told her about that what's edging i'm like oh my gosh boy i gotta tell you a lot of stuff um but i still have my full-sized one so you know i don't really need two of those decks so um new tarot decks so while i was away i got an email that said da -da -da! Da, da, da. the gay Marseille arrived so when I got home I was so thrilled um you know Charlie Claire Burgess I this was a kickstarter um I, I did a whole um video where I showed all the cards um uh decks for spring because this has a really springy color palette to me the I I got the stickers and the guidebook is fabulous i mean i just love what um charlie has to say about tarot the her um of course the fifth spirit i love and her radical tarot the book i love and um i'm just starting to get into this one so i'm very very excited about that so that was new in march and then this came right before I went away. This is the uh, deck for Wonder Walking by uh, Amy Wan. And I mean, the quality. I mean, it's just, see how it has like a little, um, it's got like a little bevel there. I mean, it's just, it's stunning. It's just gorgeous. And so um, there's um, the journal, the Wonder Walking journal that I, I got. And I also got um, a magical night journey, finding wonder and serenity under the moon and stars. So I got the night one as well. And I mean, this deck is stunning. I have, I have not... Um, done any readings with it or walkings with it um, since I, I got home. But, you know, um, spring is upon us. And, I mean, just look. It's gorgeous. Oh, I can't wait to get into this. Look at that. These paintings are beautiful. And I am really, really, really excited about this and how beautiful it is. And um, so anyway, that is a new deck to me. Um, and I'm quite excited about that. So those are two new decks um, that I uh, have, um, have just come into my um, collection and I have not used either one of them, but, you know, have looked through. And then um, a book that I just got in um, the end of February into March is this one, Tarot for the Hard Work. This is by Maria Minnis. And Maria is someone that combines spirituality and social activism. So this is um, an archetypal journey to confront racism and inspire collective healing. There's that term again, collective healing, like it says on the flamingo. So I, I bought this book before they had my flamingo experience. Um, so it's just um, a way to use the tarot to um, do anti-racism work. So as I said, it's, a, it's combining um, spirituality and social activism. And um, I've, I'm just um, really getting into it again. I came um, right before I left. So, but I'm really, really loving it. And um, I have posted it on my Instagram and Maria has commented on and she's just, 
she's like so, so grateful that people are using her book and seeing the um, significance in her work. And she has interacted with me multiple times. Um, and I think that's really lovely. So that is another new thing. Um, let's see. Oh, sorry, I have to quickly just exit stage left here. It's on my altar. I forgot to. Um, so this is a new candle that I got at the end of February. And I, it's uh, Chthonic Star. I, I'm going to put the name in the description below and the link to their, um, uh, products, uh, magic, she does, uh, magical, um, spell work stuff. And, um, I have a Hecate candle that I got from her, but I, I was just really kind of taken with this. The, um, uh, it's colored beeswax. Um, so, um, she uses a mold and pours the beeswax that she has, um, dyed with, you know, um, safe, stuff safe dye and then um she hand paints the um gold and the silver um so her work is is beautiful and um i again i'll put the um uh, put her uh uh information in the description box um oh in march i completed the for my the deccan circle that i started in um Aries Deccan 1 2023. So now um, I finished, you know, Pisces 3, and now I'm starting again to go around. And um, I, that was such an enjoyable and enlightening and interesting experience. I learned a lot about, um, of course, the Deccans, but the connection between the astrological uh, connection with tarot and tarot with ast astrology. So I'm really enjoying that, and I'm going to go around again. Um, and then I just wanted to talk about a couple things that I got when I was in Key Cocker. So I have mentioned um, several times in videos over the past couple years that um, I've been going through some um, challenges and some um, life changes and lifestyle changes. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been challenging, but... Um, growth producing um so you know not all bad and you know it's it's actually been okay i'm i'm fine and i feel like i've changed and grown and evolved and um you know one of the things that i have noticed is that um we don't grow and evolve when everything's really good <laughs> it takes some challenges to grow and evolve so if we want to continue to grow and evolve, we have to expect to have some challenges in our lives. And um, so, like I said, this has been going ongoing for a couple years now. And sometimes I feel like, oh my God, am I dragging my feet? Am I, am I stuck? Am I staying? Am I not paying attention? Am I not you know, am I not, am I just ignoring what's going on? Like, what the heck? It's so slow. And am I just being, you know, a baby? And am I just not, whatever. So I pulled a card, um, and I can't remember what deck it was from, but it had a, it might have been Sacred Medicine. I think it was Sacred Medicine Oracle. It had a turtle on it. And so among other things, but it just, the turtle, it said, you know, change is happening, but it's a slow go. You're one step in front of the other and it's gonna take time. And you know, you're not stuck. You're just moving slowly. Sometimes it, it, it that's just the way we have to do it. And so that really touched me and made me feel like, I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm moving. It's just, I'm the tortoise, not the hare. But don't forget who won the race, right? Um, so anyway, I, I know, I knew when I went to Key Cocker that 
um, I was going to see some, you know, turtles. Not, I mean, I thought I might see some turtles snorkeling. Um, I didn't. I saw a lot of fish and other things, but um, I didn't see any turtles. Um, but there, you know, were all kinds of um, art artisans who who have carved stone turtles and woven turtles and painted turtles and turtle necklaces and earrings and um, all kinds of things. So I, um, the first, or se I, on the way down, I was telling my friend Betsy about this whole turtle thing and, you know, she knows about all the changes that, that I've been going through and the challenges and stuff. And I said, so I'm going to be looking for a turtle, you know, to bring back for my altar, um, you know, some kind of a carved turtle or whatever. So um, the first day we were there, I was looking and I said to Betsy, oh, look, look. This, I love this turtle. Oh, I think I'm going to get it. And she said, you know, Liz, maybe you need to be a turtle about buying a turtle. And I was like, oh, right. I've only been here for four hours. <laughs> so um, I held off. And a few days later, we were at the beach and we were swimming and we saw this woman who was like, oh, my God, I'm so hot. She she um, lived in Key Cocker. And I said, well, why don't you? why don't you go in the water? I said, we just went in the water and we cooled off. And she said, no. She said, I have a little craft table. I make earrings and I don't, you know, I can't leave my stuff. And I said, oh, okay. And I said, well, um, what, you know, what kind of earrings do you make? So she was digging through her little fanny pack and she um, pulled out this, these pair of earrings and they were carved turtles. So Betsy and I looked at each other and I was like, oh, okay, guess that's the turtle I'm supposed to get. And I can't believe I forgot to bring them. They're in my other room. Anyway, they're, you know, just, it's great. And it was such a kind of synchronistic thing. So then um, my sister and I went cave tubing over on the mainland in Belize, which was a blast. You get in these inner tubes and you get in this river that goes through these caves and it, it gets completely dark. You have to wear like a little headlamp thing. There's waterfalls and stalactites and stalagmites and bats and oh, it's, it's so, so cool. So um, anyway, on the way out, there's all these crafts people. And my sister was gonna buy something from a carved bowl from one of these guys. And I saw this little guy and I was looking at it and I thought, oh, I'm not gonna buy it. I already bought the turtle earrings, but this would be so nice for on my altar. And so um, anyway, I put it down. So when my birthday rolled around, my sister said, oh, I have a little present for you. Well, um, she had bought the turtle for me. So I now have this turtle for my altar. And it's my reminder about I'm making progress. It's just, you know, it's not instant. Um, but also it connects me to Key Cocker and my wonderful vacation and to my my sister who, you know, who um, was very sweet and, and bought that for me. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about was this. <sighs> I found this in the water. Yes, I didn't buy it. I found it. So I was coming up out of the water, you know, and I, it's the Caribbean. And, you know, I kind of saw like this, maybe like this, much of the shell in the sand. And I know that that color means, oh, the, it's gonna be, you know, uh, it's gonna be this probably inside. But I thought maybe it's just broken off. Maybe it's a piece, I don't know. But I thought, well, let me dig. So I dug through the sand and this is what I found. You know, I have been collecting shells I mean, all my life, since I was a kid, I'm an ocean girl. Um, and I have a house full of shells and bowls and on windowsills and all over the place. This by far is the most magnificent 
shell I have ever found. And, you know, I I wasn't going to bring it back with me because it's kind of big. Um, and then I thought, um, I was talking to a friend of mine, um, you know, um, WhatsApp um, video. And I said, oh, my God, look what I found. Da, 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 da. And I said, and she said, oh, my gosh, it's a talisman, you know, blah, blah, blah. And um, I said, oh, I'm not going to bring it home. It's too big. And she's like, Liz, are you kidding me? You have got to bring that back with you. So I did. And I am, oh, my gosh, there's still sand coming out of it. So I have little pieces of key cocker in my house, little grains of sand. So anyway, that, if you made it to the end of this chit-chatty, round and about circuitous month of March catch-up, um, yay, thanks. Thanks for sticking with me as I blather along. Um, it's, you know, it's good to, it was great to get away. I loved it. Um, but it's, now it's April and I'm home and, um, it's spring. So I left in winter and I came home in spring and, you know, how great is that? I'm ready to plant seeds and, you know, get my gardening going. So anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. I love to hear your comments. Please do. I'm going to put those two um, links in the description box below. And um, uh, peace and love.